Wanted How are you to, doing? Uh, I'm doing great, thanks. Hope you're doing well. Um, wanted to start off, if you could put your special teams hat on for a minute. Um, just talk about maybe what you guys saw that led to those three blocks. Um, and then um, also, the, if you could address the punt return situation, it just seems like, you know, both those guys have sort of struggled. Is there somebody else you can still look at? Is just coaching the guys up? Uh, talk about that too, if you can. Thanks. Yeah, we uh, <clears throat> we thought there was opportunity to block some field goals with our defensive uh, guys in there. Obviously, that came that came true. Um, and really, what we talk about on uh, special teams and on defense is, you know, effort, attitude, toughness on every play, and and our heartbeat uh, of a defense of a special teams unit is, you know, really our field goal block team. You know, you know, usually when you're blocking a field goal, they're they're trying to score points or they just scored a touchdown. So how hard that team rushes really shows you, you know, the kind of effort your, your defense is playing with. So to see them, you know, absolutely lay out, uh, give it all all they got right there in that situation going into halftime, really kind of get the momentum back in our favor at that time, you know, uh, trying a long field goal, you know, can get risky. And we overloaded them one side and uh, we got there. So it was a huge play to, to go into halftime with. But Really, just proud of our guys um, playing with that effort on that on that field goal block unit. You know, getting our feet across the line of scrimmage and, and uh, everybody going hard. Um, you know, the punt return situation. Obviously, we made a change. We put Xavier back there, a guy that did it at an elite level. You know, through his high school career. You know, he is. You know, watching him through camp, we knew he would be a guy. We felt that we needed to make the change. Uh, we felt very comfortable with him catching a punt. You know, like I always say, you're a punt catcher uh, before you're a punt returner. So we felt he could he could feel the punt. Um, and and what a uh, game to go in. You know, I, I was with uh, Coach Diaz, you know, in the hotel before we went to the stadium. And I said, how, how else would you want it? A true freshman on the road, number one team in the country, in the rain, to go field your first punt. So, uh, you know, I, I command, you know, commend him for going in there and trying. You know, he, he actually had two situations where one of the ball, the ball hit one of their guys on their punt unit. So he was smart enough to pick it up and try to advance it without penalty. I thought that was a big time play for a freshman to understand, um, to understand that that, that was uh, the situation. And then, um, you know, it was unfortunate that the other punt, it was it was a hot punt. You know, he was on the 10-yard line. We tell him, don't, you know, we tell him, don't stand, you know, stand on the 10, don't back up. And if it's hot, let it go. Uh, you know, just a situation, young guy in a game that, that thought he could field it and, and advance it. Um, I don't fault him for the effort. Um, it was a learning experience. We got fortunate that it was a touchback. But, uh, you know, something we learned from. But we still have all the confidence in the world with Xavier. Um, you know, we still have confidence in Pope and we still have confidence in Gervin. Um, but we, we want to see Xavier back there. And, and again, like I said, there was no harder test than going on the road to Clemson in the rain. First time returning punts than, than uh, Saturday night. Coach Packy, we're going to go to David Lake at Inside the U. David, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, sticking with special teams, I was wondering if you could highlight some of the younger guys who have impressed you with with what they're doing, maybe on the coverage units, or you know, just a few guys who have stand stood out to you so far. Yeah, one that stood out Saturday night, and he's been a standout for you know last year and this season is uh, to Corey Couch. You know, he's our gunner on punt team. He played with unbelievable effort. You know, he's getting a lot more snaps on defense. So that's not that does not take away how hard he's playing on special teams. Um, and I was and I was very proud of him for that. Young guys like Tariq Austin Cave giving great effort on kickoff, full full tilt, full speed. Corey Flag is showing up. We're trying to get him on more units. Um, obviously, he's playing more on defense as well. You know, a guy that's smart, savvy, can run, can tackle, has a great sense of uh, in special teams where the ball is going. Um, you know, Avery Huff, a guy that did not play last year that has come along and really helped us out on special teams. And then the offensive guys on the offensive side of the ball, Mike Redding done a great job. Keyshawn Smith done a great job. Um, and there's more that we need to get in there and we're trying to get those guys in there. But, you know, those guys come to mind. Uh, Restrepo obviously ha has helped us. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of young guys that doing doing what we ask. And again, effort, attitude, toughness, understanding the scheme, understanding that they have a big part in our, in our success on special teams. 
Coach Packy, we're going to Barry Jackson at the Miami Herald. Barry, go ahead for Coach Packy. Hi, John. Uh, two quick things. Any thought to Knighton or Cheney as a returner? And I know on Saturday night, Herb Street and Fowler were saying that you guys think Keontra Smith could be a special player. What's the skill set there that makes you very optimistic about his future? Yeah, for the first question, uh, you know, Don and Rooster are both elite returners and, and uh, Knighton is really, really elite. We really want to get him back there on kickoff return. You know, obviously he's been running with the twos. He's, he's caught every time we go kickoff return, he's back there catching kicks, you know. Um, so there, there's no question that we, we'd like to work him into the game. And I think he's close to doing that. But, you know, you, you see him on offense. He, once he gets out, he, he has the explosiveness to go the, go the whole way. So definitely gaining more trust in him as a returner. And Don Cheney would be the next guy up uh, back there as well. Uh, I, I trust in both those guys, what they're doing right now. They're so mature. Um, the way they prepare, you know, they prepare like an older guy. You, you just watch them and, and, you know, you watch them on every unit on offense, on special teams. You don't feel like they're freshmen. You know, they just they just carry themselves different. So absolutely feel comfortable with those guys going into the game, and hopefully that's coming soon. Um, as far as Keontre, we, we do. We feel like he's a special player. Obviously, Gilbert's playing fantastic right now um, and, and, and really the best he's played um, since he's been here and two back-to-back -back games that he's played at a high, high level. And Keontra, he's doing the same. You know, it, it's – I'm trying to get both those guys in there because they're both playing at a high level. Keontra is just a very physical, physical player, as you saw Saturday night. You know, he tackled the best back in the country, in, in my opinion, Etienne, and had no problem taking him down. He, he had no fear. You know, he's just a true tackler, sturdy, strong body, um, understands the game. You know, I think – He's learning each and every day, and, and he's really learning from Gilbert. It's funny as you say, they're a year apart, but Gilbert prepares, and he's so smart with the game. And to, for him to sit in the same room as GB is uh, is really teaching him how to prepare for a game. And really, once he gets that, I mean, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. But his physicality and his tackling, um, he can really, really run. You know, you see him uh, chase a guy down the sideline when, when it spits out, um, and, and he just hawks him down. So – the guy can run. He's physical. He can tackle. Has no fear. Um, so, um, and it was unfortunate for him. We, you know, we're going to be missing him the, the first uh, half of the game this weekend. You know, and and the guy was just playing hard. And it's unfortunate. You know, what I told him is he he's got to tackle with his eyes up for first and foremost for his safety, and then so he doesn't get kicked out of the game. But you know, he was doing exactly what we coach to to green dog to the quarterback and. He just needed to, to have his eyes up, and I don't think they make that call. But, you know, he's preparing like he's going to play, and he will play in the second half. Awesome. Coach, we've got time for a couple more. We're going to go to David Ferronis at the Sun Sentinel. David, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, along the lines of uh, Gilbert Ferris, and I, I want to know uh, the keys in his development over the past uh, couple seasons uh, to get to the point where he is now. And a uh, second question I want to ask about uh, what you think are the pro prospects of uh, Jose Borregales and, and Lou Headley, their potential uh, at the next level. Yeah, I think GB, you know, players never want to sit behind an older guy. You know, they always want to play, play, play. But, you know, GB last year had an opportunity to play, but he also had an opportunity to watch Romeo, a senior, a guy that kind of waited his time, and, and Romeo that played, you know, at a high level for, for majority of his career, you know, the last two, two uh, seasons of his career. So I think that definitely helped to see how an older guy prepared. Um but the way Gilbert, the, the the reason he makes a lot of the plays he makes is because he knows the play before the play. And that's all film study. You know, the question he asked, he wants to know everything about the defense. And, you know, he came here as a corner. He knows the safety position and, and he plays striker. So he can he can get the corners line. He can get the safeties line. He can get the, the linebackers line. He can call the front. He just knows the entire defense. And since he's so comfortable within our defense, and the way we do things, now he's able to look at the offense and what they're trying to attack against us. So, you know, his his preparation is second to none. Um, he, he constantly studies. He's constantly texting me, hey, what about this? What about this? You know, what's the game plan? He wants a day early. Um, what about this formation? What about this motion? How, how do we feel on third down? So just his intelligence in the game of football 
and really where he's come a long way and where I'm re really proud of Gilbert is the, the way he's tackling right now. You know, the question with him coming out inside into the box from corner was, is he going to be physical enough? Is he going to be able to tackle well enough? And the last two games, uh, you know, there hadn't been a better tackler. And I'm just so proud that he's taken that and really excelled in, in his tackling abilities and being physical at the point of attack. Um, Lou Headley and Jose Borgales, man, glad we got those guys. Obviously glad Jose's here. Seven for seven on the year. The guy has ice in his veins, knock on wood. Um, like I said, you know, in, uh, in, in camp, you know, he just, he prepares like a pro. He treats himself like a pro, um, takes care of his body. If anything's ever hurting, he's here extra, getting extra work. He tells me, hey, I, I need this. I need extra kick. I don't need a kick today. And we just handle those guys like pros. And and he does everything right. He goes into pregame. He has his routine. You know, I don't even I don't even mess with his routine. But the guy's been solid as a rock, and we're really, really glad to have him. And he's been really good. You know, you don't you take for granted his kickoffs, but his kickoffs has been really, really uh really good. I think he's almost 80% touchbacks right where you want to be. Um, and, and if they're not a touchback, they're a high hang time where our guys can get down there and cover um, and, and tackle inside the 25. So um, can't, can't congratulate him enough what, what he's already done this season, but I think he's, he's still got a lot of work to do as far as, you know, leaving here as a, as a uh, one of the greatest to, to do it. Um, and then Lou Headley, you know, he, he got the game off against Florida State. Uh, we didn't have to punt one time for him against Florida State, so he comes back this past weekend and punts seven times. Uh, net, I think he netted 40, a little over 46. So you know, that's a great day, you know, as a punter. That's what we ask. And the biggest thing is with Lou, he's had one returnable punt all year. And with the placement and with our coverage, the, and that that's, uh, again, going to our coverage unit, how hard guys are playing. Um, you know, Brian Balaam is another freshman that's really, really shown up on special teams. I forgot to mention him, but he's he plays an unbelievable effort. Um, but And he's on punt team. So our guy's covering for him, his hang time, his placement. The biggest difference between Lou this year and last year is his placement of the football. You know, last year, sometimes he sprayed them into the middle of the field. This year, they've really, really been outside the hash, and some majority of them even outside the numbers. So the guy's got a huge leg. Um, you know, when you're you're netting 46, that's that's great. And and really, he hasn't had that that one that punters want where it rolls out for another 40, um, just because they're hanging up there so long. But you know, I can't again. Same thing. He's a pro. Carries himself like a pro. Takes his job very very seriously. Um, and and glad that we got those two guys. And not to leave out Clay. Clay Clay is snapping to him at an elite level. Um, he was great last year, and he's been on point this year as well. Coach Packy, we got one more for you. This is from Chris Stock at Inside the U. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, a little bit more curious about kick returning. Um, you mentioned a couple guys in the mix with Jalen and Don. Are there who are some other guys working in there as well? And also, your kick return, you only five returns so far in the season. Is there an average that you guys are shooting for? Do you feel more yards are in there? And then just lastly, with kick returners fielding the ball in the end zone, what's kind of your message? Either take it out, let them have – uh, their own opinion on the field. What's kind of your message uh, with that? Yeah, as far as kick return, you know, if it's, it's if it's caught in the field of play, we want to take it. Um, you know, we've gone against a really good kicker. Clemson had a really good kickoff guy. Their kicker was elite. He bombed him. You know, we knew going into the game he was 95% touchback. If we had an opportunity to return it, it might have been one. Um, and that was the case. You know, obviously they were backed up and they were they were kicking 15 yards back. So we had an opportunity to return it. You know, I thought we could have got more out of that return, honestly. Um, but it was good, good situation to teach off of, you know, to be backed up. And then, you know, we're catching the, the kickoff on our 10 yard line. But as far as returning, we, you know, we really like Knighton. We need to get Don Chaney back there some more. You know, Harley's an off returner. Harley can always be a returner. The guy's tough, fearless. Um, you know, Cam. Harris is an off returner. There's no question he could be a returner. Um, obviously, Pope's back there, but really, I think the next guy in line would be uh, Jalen, you know, and Don. Um, but we got a lot of guys that can kick, you know, catch kickoff returns. The 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 harder one is punt return um, because it's just more of a hectic. You don't know where the ball is going. There's people in your face. I always say, you know, kickoff returns like an offensive play. You kind of want an offensive player like a tailback. 
uh, receiver that can read it, return. It's like an offensive play. You're reading the play. So, um, but we got guys, again, we, we roll guys back there every day. Um, every time we do kick out return and we got a, we got a handful that we feel very comfortable with. Um, but our average, you know, a good return is to the 25. Obviously you can fair catch it and get to the 25. You know, we want to be, if we take it out, we want to be past the 30. What I'm, you know, what I'm disappointed about right now, we haven't had many returns opportunities, but we need an explosive play on, on the return units of, of our football team. We need a return. We need a punt return for a first down at least, hopefully more of an explosive return. Um, and we need an explosive kickoff return. And, and that's our goal is to be explosive, obviously to have the ball at the end of the play, but we need to be explosive in that return. And, and that's what we're looking for right now, a guy that can be explosive. Now, you got to have it blocked up, you know, and, and the more the explosive the guy is back there, the more they trust him, the, more, the harder they work for him, just like we saw in KJ last year. You know, guys trusted him that he was going to make one guy miss and we can get out in the field on punt return. And, and guys really started blocking for a long, long time and as hard as they could for, for KJ. So, you know, I think it's a group effort. You know, we got to block better and, and we got to we got to return better. But we're looking we're hunting for that explosive return. I think it's coming. We just got to keep working.